Um, I'm going to talk a little bit about our medicines optimization using open data, so no open source I'm afraid, get the booze over quickly. Uh, and it's some work we're doing with uh, CSU in London, which we used open data sources, which we think uh, transforms how you can look at how medication is used in the NHS. Um, so I'm talk a little bit about the problem, what we've done, and then some lessons from the whole experience, which is worth uh, talking about. So, um, if you go to doctor, normally one of three things happens. Uh, you get a prescription, uh, you go home, or you get sent to hospital. In the time I'm going to talk today, is about a quarter million prescriptions going to be dispensed, about 800 million a year, um, and all of those flow around the system. And PCTs, what used to be PCTs, about 25% of their spend is medicines. So it's quite a big chunk of spend, and it has a big impact on patients. Now, CCGs and CSUs employ some people called medication optimizers, um, or medications managers, prescribing managers, and their job is to look at the uh, dispensing and prescribing going on in their area and look at how it can be improved. Uh, and that might be because a, dr a drug's gone off patent, so you can use a cheaper version. It might be um, encouraging use of best practice for prescribing across the population. Um, just general activities like this. Unfortunately, they have a really difficult um, job. They, they don't really have a single source of data. They're working with GPs who are spread about geographically. They don't have a clear view of what's going on in the GP systems. And they don't have view to sort of benchmarking that data more widely. So they can't say, Dr. X, your performance is here. You could improve it. Um, look what's happening over here. Here's how we can make a big change. And that has two really big impacts. One is it affects patients' health and outcomes. The other one, it means we're spending more money than we have to, um, often to adverse events, to adverse causes. So, we thought we'd see we could fix the problem. Um, we know there's various open data sources out there. We were lucky enough to work with a CSU to um, produce a system based on this. And what it does is it uses various open data sources and visualizations to help prescribing advisors understand what's going on. I'll show you some screenshots in a second so you don't need to peer too closely and take through, the, through it. So it allows you to drill down into <coughs> how prescribing is happening by practice, the spend by BNF category, and then start to map that against outcomes, disease prevalence, etc., to help change behaviours. And uh, we're quite pleased. This is a real quote. So that's some feedback from uh, one of the prescribing advisors. So what does the tool actually look like? So what we've got here on screen, a map. We've covered up some of the CCGs for various reasons. Um, you can select any BF, BNF, you can select by timeline. And this is the interesting thing. So this has got multiple open data sources on there. So this is the spend normalized by Astro P prescribing unit. And, and when, you, when you go to a doctor and you say, you're spending more than you should do, the usual answer is, well, that's because uh, we've got a lot more people with diabetes in my area, or I've got, uh, my population's different. So what we've done is we've actually normalized it by um, diabetes prevalence. So this is the spend normalized by prescribing. This is normalized by prevalence of disease. So that immediately starts to start some questions. So we've highlighted the practices in blue, which are these dots is a, or circles of practice. So why, the, why is this practice here spending more per head of population, 8,000 versus 3,000? It allows you to start getting into conversation around that. And it might be this is a really good thing to do because it's, it's uh, saving you money further down the pathway, but it allows you to interactively explore this. And if you're having that conversation, you might want to start drilling into it. So you can, of course, select anything you want here, start the comparison, and you can start to drill into more detail. And that allows you to have really interactive conversations. And the tool actually takes it a step further. You can see this diabetes, but obviously it does it for a number of the other chronic diseases because um, one of the, the, the counters to this is, is, well, I'm really bad on that disease, but I might be better elsewhere. And you can actually see that it's the same practices. You can start picking out patterns. But let's drill in a bit further. So the blue bars here are the practices we'd selected that we're interested in. And the gray bars are the ones who are, we're not interested in. It starts to say, well, you know, these guys are spending a lot of money on prescribing. Why is that normalized? You can take it further. Uh, and what we've got on here is the, the spending by particular categories within BNFA. And you've got the, the GP we're looking at in blue, but you've also got 
that against reference levels. So they're spending more than the reference group we've selected and more than London. You can start to explore why that is and have those conversations. It might not be a bad thing. It might be a good thing they're spending more, more but you can start to, to explore the behaviors and it changes behaviors. You can also spot anomalies. So we've got a drug up here that we're spending way more per head of population than the averages. So you might want to explore why that is. Are we prescribing inappropriately? Have they got a particular um, patient population that leads that um, behavior? And um, very often people want to get down to the basics. So you actually want to actually look at the drugs being prescribed in detail. This allows you to drill in that as well. So we can see the formulations here. So this is the drug we talked about earlier. You can see all the formulations being used and the cost of them. That allows you to have that conversation around. So this is the cost of what you're doing and it doesn't compare favorably elsewhere on a, a money thing, but let's look at it holistically. And you can start looking at outcomes as well. So we've got a proxy for outcomes in the system. So that's the process we've gone through and it's taken a few weeks to, to build. It's now being used for live. We're getting some positive feedback. I've got a couple of lessons to talk through which we've, um, we've got here. We've got some time for questions. So the, um, the eye-opener for us is that we have a lot of people who understand technology and quite a few people who understand the domain, but the real value starts to come when we, we start to work with frontline prescribing advisors who really understand their business um, and can tell us what they have and don't have. So combining that technology, knowledge of the data, and the people who really understand the business problem was immensely powerful and helped, them, uh, helped us to develop the tool, which we think is a big change, step change. Um, we worked very quickly, so we, we generated visualizations, we showed them to the users, right, how can you improve that? So we started with pretty good visualizations, as it says here, move to what we think of awesome visualizations, but once you understand them, really helps you to get into the business problem and start to convince people to change behaviors, which is really what this is all about. The tool's fascinating, but unless it makes an impact on the end user and their behaviors, it doesn't add any value. Um, the other thing is the tool set allows exploration. So um, what I haven't shown you today because I wasn't confident for network connection is there's an entire national data set in there. So you can compare yourself with any CCG or prescribing practice across the UK and it can be used anywhere in the UK. So that allows you to actually start to see whether your changes in how pharmaceuticals are being used in your area, how they, 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 they're reflected nationally. So you might be aware of what's happening in London if you're a London-based thing. You don't know how that's happening elsewhere in the, 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 the UK. And that allows you to make those comparisons, which is quite powerful. So um, I'm not a pharmacist, so don't, don't ask me a question about this, but things like oral blood thinners versus warfarin and things, you know, is the uptake of that in our area, has that compared na nationally? Are we ahead or behind the curve on that? So that was really powerful. Um, and, and the other one is very much a pragmatic thing, which is something today that's useful be, beats something perfect somewhere in the future. So don't wait for perfect, build something, use it, see how the, what the feedback is and start to evolve it really quickly because it gets better over time. And then the other thing is this whole platform is actually built on cloud technology. Now we did that because it allows you to deploy the thing very quickly, develop it very quickly, and data volumes are no longer an issue. So you can work with full national scale data with no issues at all in terms of performance, and that will scale out in a completely flat way to as many users as you want as well. Um, which I know are big statements, but, but that's what we've seen.